Hey, what's up? Lots of really cool feedback from the IG Live that I did with Allie last week. Uh, the big question that I know a lot of people are asking is that yes, we were in the same house. Uh, I was outside and she was inside and the reason we couldn't do it facing each other was because the, the microphone from one phone would pick up the audio from the other so it was a big echo and it wouldn't work but I like being outside anyway. Um, the the uh, that that whole thing is 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 in two parts on my Instagram. It's also on Allie's Instagram, and it's about to go up on her uh, podcast. Allie do is win, and the topic that was really the selling point to start off a lot of conversation about energy systems and and being precise in training and understanding maybe where some gaps are was can you use your weightlifting or your weight training for cardio and it's always just like with a lot of questions that I get asked or really anybody that gets asked that nothing is ever linear it's like okay that's it can be it depends what you do what do you call weight training and what do you call cardio so we get into that we break down the different types of things that you can do with external resistance, and some of them make it very much uh, for a health cardio benefit, uh, but there are certain ones that are simply not, where it's really a very incomplete and very unfortunate if you think that going through uh, an Olympic lifting uh, training session uh, or a athletic development weightlifting uh, resistance training session, uh, because your heart rate gets to certain places, that that is sufficient uh, for health cardio, uh, cardiovascular uh, or even fitness. It's just inconsistent. So uh, that doesn't make it bad. Of course, you need to be lifting and we need to be doing things explosively, et cetera, et cetera. And how do we tie all those things together was, uh, I think we were on there for like an hour and a half because I'm pretty good at talking forever. Um, the uh, We went on to describe cardio two different ways and then within those two different blocks, break them into different areas of the central cardiovascular system talking primarily the impact on the left ventricle uh, pumping blood and does it need to pump blood at a very fast heart rate or a very slow heart rate because those are two very very different and there's different costs involved with those two so we appreciated that uh, and then a peripheral value uh, to mitochondria and the value of how those two systems one can be very very well trained and the other not as much we'll find that the peripheral recovery uh, of acidosis from a very high heart rate, a very intense training session, which may or may not even include weightlifting, uh, can be take quite some time compared to how quickly your heart rate comes back down. Those can be two very, very different things. And then that leads into matching up your effort in your work interval uh, to the amount of output whether it's speed, wattage, et cetera, all these different metrics where we're trying to always keep them even because if you don't, this we didn't really get into, but I mentioned it a couple of times because this is what motivates changes in motor strategy and those consistent changes in motor strategy uh, can lead to soft tissue changes. And while it is a significant impact in, uh, in injury recognition and injury risk, uh, certainly not the only one, but that's something that I think a lot of folks don't really get into, where that would segment into two other things. On July 22nd at 2 p.m., uh, I am in a group of three other folks, Chuck Wolf, uh, Michael Mullen, and Ian Manning, and Perform Better is going to be doing uh, this year, instead of individual webinars, kind of block the screen into four and everybody gets to, to play nice in the sandbox and, and present uh, why they do what they do and maybe why they don't do what they don't do. And the topic of prehab and rehab, I have every intention to talk about the best uh, prehab is to have very, very significant and relevant work capacity for your activity. Uh, I, I'm much less concerned about how do we solve injuries and bring the system back up to normal as a form of prehab. I don't think that that's the answer. I think people are miserably out of shape, uh, and that's why uh, uh, injuries uh, happen. Now, there's a lot of other things that can lead somebody to be fatigued, 
uh, but if you don't start with the output of even having the capability uh, to be very, very fit and deliver repeated activities in your sport then, uh, or even in your training, uh, you're getting into to, to some things that I don't think a lot of people talk about in injury prevention. It's not just being strong. Uh, there's a lot of components uh, to work capacity and fitness that we're going to talk about there. And then that's the segue that I know I owe this to a lot of people. Uh, last week we put out the trailer and hopefully uh, got some people jazzed up uh, for the uh, T equals R systems mentorship. I want to talk a little bit about what that is or maybe what it isn't. Um, it's going to be a limited amount of people and basically you know, we're, going to set a, we're going to set a price tag to it. We're going to have individual calls, we're going to have group calls, we're going to have a lot of things that a lot of other people are doing, but what other people are doing, you don't have me. And really what I want to be able to do is truly be a mentor uh, for folks. I, I can go back to the beginning, and I just even did it last week, and I'm going to get away from it, where I have never turned down a phone call. I have never turned down a podcast. I'm doing one completely in Spanish in a week or two, which I think is going to be exciting. This mentorship, though, is you get me. And we call it the T equals R systems because it may not only be uh, advice and, and mentorship regarding uh, fitness. It may not only be uh, mentorship on rehab and therapy types of things. It could be business. It could be you know, appreciating uh, a lot of the failures that I have gone through and how I have then uh, attempted, uh, hopefully succeeded, into getting past those. That's what this mentorship is. A mentor, a mentor is somebody who's going to tell you things that maybe other people don't want to tell you because they think they're being mean. Uh, a, a mentor is somebody who doesn't want you to make the same mistakes that they made so a little bit different. This isn't just dissemination of information. This is me taking a genuine interest uh, in your business, a genuine interest in your training, in your development, your growth, your family, etc. Uh, I'd like to say this is something that we did, uh, Sam Gibbs and I did for 10 years uh, with the staff in, in, in men's Canada basketball. And uh, since I have moved on from there, this is, uh, I'm gonna build another team. And, uh, and this team uh, is somebody uh, necessarily interview one-on-one, -on -one, but there's going to be a selection process because I'm not going to be doing this to start with, with uh, more people. We're going to do it with less. That's, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the team was our uh, systems mentorship. Uh, this week when I make some videos, we'll add a, a clinical piece so you have a reason to watch it other than an advertisement. Uh, but we're very excited on, on where that's going to go. And uh, I'm, we're going to build our little list out of it and start to get that application where people will fill it out. And, but that's what it is. This isn't just log in and get a bunch of information. Uh, if you are not willing to provide a backdrop uh, for how you think I can help you, then this probably won't be uh, something that will make a lot of sense for you. This is somebody who knows uh, what, what, uh, you know, what my failures have been. Uh, what you might perceive my successes and how can I help you. It's why I've gotten away from seminars. People don't ask questions. Well now, if there's only however many people we decide to let into this thing, these are your questions driving the content, uh, which can be private, meaning you don't have to participate in the group, uh, but uh, particularly if it's, if it's uh, professional sports teams or other types of businesses that don't want their models to be associated with others, makes perfect sense. I don't have an issue with that but this is going to be, you will be driving the content and of these different types, of these different categories. It might not only be clinical, it might be some data uh, analysis, uh, uh, and, it might, and it certainly will be some social systems, and we're going to talk a lot about those things uh, over the next several weeks. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully the video still uh, creates some traction, and, and hopefully we'll get to uh, see you soon. So. Last thing, of course, I haven't asked in a while, but hey, if anybody's seen a leprechaun, say yeah.